Hello my lovelies, Rob here again from Kickback Garage. Now in this video I will be attempting to fit the SIP V2 tapered roller bearing into my Lambretta. So if that's something you fancy having a look at, then uh, grab the old coffee, mine's a double espresso, and uh, I'll roll the intro. Whoop! <laughs> Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. I'm a cut of the merang, all the sprung in logo will a come under talk. In your novice back out to other forty flock for what to do or draw. Can we phone can a sudden come to us and to cover so we are the brother loud summer? Well, before I show you what the uh, what this is all about, I just have to say something about SIP. Uh, it proved to be a real pain in the arse to get hold of uh, this bearing from SIP scooter shop. Uh, what happened was I uh, ordered it on a, uh, a weekend when I was at work and as you do when you're on the uh, internet, you throw in a couple of extra things, don't you? So I ordered the, uh, I ordered the uh, headset kit and I ordered some clutch plates and I needed a tank strap because I want to bust on my Series 1 there. Now, <laughs> what happened is the, uh, they were in stock when I ordered them and then on Monday, they were suddenly not in stock. And then, so I cancelled the order. But then I got a, 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 an email saying, in German, of course. I mean, they don't translate anything for us uh, that speak English. And in German, I got an email saying, well, uh, it's, uh, it wasn't out of stock after all, and it's been sent. So I go in and have a look at my account. And what they've managed to do is split up the two, uh, or, uh, they've split that one order up into two. And so I, I had to phone them up, and, but it wasn't on my account. There was a lot of messing about. So I had, ended up having to phone them up. And I talked to uh, one chap first, then I got put over to another chap. So after about half an hour, 27 minutes, I think, actually, <laughs> to tell you the truth, um, then uh, what, it, what I tried to explain to him is that when he splits up, when they split up, parcels in two this is going to be the same dilemma that you get in the uk now so you'll probably be able to understand this more um the, the problem is is they take off the norwegian vat as they do the english vat and uh, but if they split up the package into two i mean they both went on the same day how stupid is that and well <laughs> as you see i've got a bit of a gripe um so what happened is i ended up uh getting two handling fees on top of the uh, VAT. But when I explained this to SIP, they said, it'd be no problem. Uh, when this uh, headset bearing uh, kit goes out, then uh, we'll write on the package and uh, you won't have to pay extra handling fees. So uh, that little soiree there cost me £70 extra. So this is the most expensive headset, and it's expensive to start off with. Most expensive headset I've ever done. So... What I would uh, suggest is if you buy stuff from SIP, they do make some nice stuff. Um, the VIP, in, the VIP uh, electronic ignition kit in particular, I really love that. Um, do yourself a favor. If you're in the UK or if you're anywhere else, use a dealer. Use a proper dealer so you can go down and pick it up or use a dealer that sends stuff out properly because their web uh, site... Uh, they haven't got full control of that, and it it just it just was a real balls ache. So uh, three weeks later, it's turned up, and now we're going to fit it. So let's have a look at it. So this is what I'm going to be fitting today. Um, now uh, it comes delivered the kit. It comes delivered in this uh, little box, and it has a uh, QR code on the back there. So I was thinking that's nice. Sip have made some instructions, but. Lo and behold, when you uh, scan your phone on that, you just get the SIP website. So, absolutely no instructions whatsoever. Um, uh, what the kit comes with is uh, this bearing race here, which you uh, fit on your fork. It comes with the roller taper, which is sort of the star of the show. Um, the race itself is a separate piece that you have to either peen, punch, let's have a look, see if I can find it. I don't want to drop this in because this came sort of semi-assembled and I used ages trying to get it out. So I'm just going to put that on there loosely. So that fits inside this 
uh, cup here. Now, this is the one for chrome ring uh, scooters, which is what, 64 and uh, older. But uh, yep, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll fit it and give it a go. So this ring sits in here and you either have to uh, punch it with a punch or uh, use some Loctite. Now I've got some bearing Loctite, some green stuff, and the tolerance is really tight there. So if I put that in with Loctite, then uh, it should be fine. But uh, for purpose, purposes of fitting, I think I'll fit that after I fit, fit the uh, cup to the scooter. Uh, one thing to note here, which uh, I'm not really that pleased about, the Vespa type uh, tapered roller bearings, they come with uh, a, a rubber seal at the bottom. But as uh, Vespa people, for some strange reason, we just get this shitty looking uh, ring on there. Let's have a look, it sits there obviously. <laughs> Turn it around, Rob. We just get this like shitty looking ring it there and it's not really gonna offer that good uh, weather protection. Now uh, on series ones and twos, we don't have the plate that sits at the bottom of the bearing originally um, but what we do have is the inner mud guard so that should help a little bit now when you grease these up they uh, recommend a special type of grease because on roller taper bearings uh, they use a thinner thinner sort of grease but um, I've been looking through all my engineering books and uh, workshop books and I think the reason why they do that, that they recommend a thin grease is because if you use a thick grease on a high speed bearing, uh, then uh, it can uh, build up warmth or heat and you can destroy the rollers. But in our case, on a Lambretta, it's not going to get hot. It's not spinning around. It's just turning. So what I think I'll do uh, just to... Uh, help me with that uh, water ingress situation that, I'm, that you might end up getting on one of these. Uh, I'm going to be fitting, uh, fitting it with some marine grease. I'm not going to overdo it. I'm just going to smear it in there and maybe pack the bottom in a little bit so that I don't get water ingress. So that's sort of a bad thing. The good thing is these are at least three times the size of uh, normal uh, lower bearing uh, you get on your Lambretta. And all modern motorbikes uh, use roller taper bearings. And uh, I fit these, uh, a similar sort of kit actually, on uh, the last two BSAs that I've used. And they've worked really, really well. Uh, point of note though, is that I've had these on the top and on the bottom. The problem with the classic scooters is the fact that we ha don't have a lot of room. So what we... Uh, what we uh, get in this kit here instead of a roller taper bearing at the top is you get this cup that's been specially machined with this like taper at the bottom for your uh, for a normal standard uh, bearing here and uh, a seal bearing. Uh, nice thing about this is it's probably really really easy to uh, to swap out if it does uh, get destroyed, but. Uh, to tell you the truth, the uh, the whole brunt of the uh, front brake um, does the the forces do get transferred more on the lower bearing race. So uh, if we're lucky, these will probably outlast both me and the scooter. So <laughs> let's uh, let's hope for that. I'll see how it is. On uh, I'll do a bit of a road test on it once I fit it. Um, and the, in the blob, they say the original type uh, Lambretta bearings, they are uh, just one step up from normal push bike or cycle parts. And that's actually bullshit because uh, that's why I've kept my mountain bike here. I'm not sure how easy you can see it, but the bearings on my mountain bike are actually bigger <laughs> than the bearings on a Lambretta. So that's a, <laughs> a bit of a truth. But uh, that being said, that mountain bike does go through a lot of punishment and uh, gets lots of uh, hard hits. So uh, yeah, so modern mountain bikes, they actually use bigger bearings. This one is bigger than my mountain bike though. And uh, I reckon it should, uh, 
should get quite an easy life on a Lambretta, depending on how your brakes are. But I'm going to go into that a little bit uh, later because uh, the reason, well, I'm not, I'll do it now. The reason why I have to change this, I, <laughs> I don't have to put this one, the zip one. Uh, I'm quite happy with the standard uh, standard Lambretta bearings, to tell you the truth. But I wanted to uh, fit this just to make some content, fill my channel up. So uh, the reason why I'm fitting this is that I had a Scoot RS disc brake on my Lambretta Series 1. And that was just brutal. The, uh, the brake action on it was absolutely terrible. And now that I've fit the uh, BGM um, from the anti-dive disc brake, I could feel I had a little bit of slack in the bearing. So what, what happened, I couldn't feel that when I had the, uh, when I had the Scoot RS disc brake on there. But, uh, so what I've done, I tightened up the, uh, bearings and now it's notchy. So that's, that's sort of a problem. Uh, this kit will, will also, uh, alleviate. Now, when you're tightening up bearings on the original setup, uh, it's really important not to over tighten them that the, the wheel is loose, but it's also really important that you don't get a uh, fore and aft movement on your fork. And that's a bit of a good luck uh, situation there where it's quite hard to uh, find the sweet spot. So obviously at some point, either my uh, bearings have come, become slack and we haven't noticed it because of the crappy disc brake, or I've tightened them a little bit too tight. And what has happened is I've got a flat spot on the bearing. I'm not sure where it is. I'll look at that when I take it out. And uh, it's absolutely terrible uh, at steering. It's really, really notchy and the, it really, really affects the uh, the handling of the scooter. It feels absolutely horrible. It's really, really scary. So that's why I'm fitting this. Now, the nice thing about this uh, is the fact that you've got this like normal uh, push bike or smaller than normal push bike bearing on the top, the sealed bearing. And you get this uh, ring here, which is exactly the same system that they also use on push bikes. When you clamp this down, you uh, preload the uh, bearings. Uh, once it's tight, it's tight. So you don't have to mess around trying to find the, uh, the Goldilocks zone uh, when you put in these bearings there. You just tighten it up and once it's, once it's uh, snug, you're sorted. And the fact that it's got a taper roller at the bottom and this uh, little uh, shim at the top, which has got this chamfer here, as you may be able to see on the edge there, this will centralize the fork into the frame as well a lot better. Now, SIP also supply this, because uh, the thing that I'm worried about here is the fact that the uh, SIP bearing is um, two and a half millimeters taller than the standard setup. So what you have to do is lose one of your tightening nuts on the top, and you just use the one of them, and you use this uh, tab washer. So once you've tightened it down, you can uh, fold the tab up, and that should keep it secure into place. Now, this is just a guess, obviously, because SIP don't give uh, fitting instructions. Right, so that was actually a bit of a pain in the ass. It was so tight, the tolerance is there on the, on the, on the race, you can actually see the marks on my fork. <laughs> so what I'm worried about now is that it's uh, expanded enough uh, so that the the bearing itself won't sit on the race properly. But uh, what I, what I did was uh, I actually had to warm it up, and then I used this race. As you see, it's quite a good fit on the top there, and. Uh, Knocked it down. It did take quite a bit of effort to get on there, I have to say. Now, that could have something to do with my fork, but uh, yeah, it was a pain anyway. I've never had a problem with uh, other races. And uh, my dilemma now is, will, will this fit over there? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. First off, I have to line it up properly, and I'm going to have to uh, wiggle it about a bit, see if I can get it to fit. Now, uh, what I must remember is at the bottom of the bearing, we've got this ring that sits there. Now, uh, I've put the bearing on before I fit the race, just to see how it sat on there. 
and actually looks uh, looks okay. Uh, they, they don't really need that much weather protection, and because of this height thing, like originally uh, on series ones and twos and threes, you also have this uh, dust cover that sits over the bearing like this uh, in the frame itself under the cup. But this is uh, a good millimeter thick. So what I think I'll do to save myself some height so that I don't have to, uh, hopefully, <laughs> won't have to uh, file the notch a little bit bigger in the fork for the uh, bolt, I think I'm just gonna omit this in the frame. So let me uh, lube, lube this uh, up and I'm gonna have to do some real careful tapping I reckon to get this over I, I don't like it it's really really tight now I I understand that the tolerance tolerance it has to be tight but this is borderline ridiculous it's not been an easy job not whatsoever Right, me lovelies, I've been uh, at this for uh, maybe an hour and a half. <laughs> and there is no way on God's earth that that bearing, after you fit the tract on the fork, will go over the tract. Now, I've been using an array of uh, bits here just to try and uh, knock it over the edge, just to enter the bearing on the uh, on the track let me just take these off oh my god and oh it's it's really hard to line up for the first thing but when i But I seriously can't get it further than this. It's so annoying. The biggest annoyance is now I have to order proper cups and bearings. And I have to find some way of getting that bearing tracked off the fork again. Because, they, because of the uh, way that this is designed, you can't get to it. So I'm going to have to use a Dremel or a chisel or something like that. It's just seriously will not. No matter how much I try, I cannot knock the uh, bearing over the tract. And now it's uh, crooked as fuck. Uh, seriously, I completely give up. So... I don't think I'll uh, I'll have to do. I'm good, just gonna have to take all this off and uh, start from scratch and just fit the original parts again. That is just so annoying, really. So I'll uh, love you and leave you there. And uh, I'm gonna go out for a ride. I'm just so frustrated. And I normally don't give up. I am not a giver upper. You know that. It's just that thing. As soon as you fit the bearing track on the fork, which is a bit of a pain, if uh, your fork is slightly out of tolerance. I mean, this is in a chente. It's not. Rolls Royce, uh, then the uh, inner bearing uh, race just does not fit on the bearing. Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. I'm a clear to the merang, all the sprung in log of Villa Commander Talk. In your novice, my car to have the forty frog for what to do or draw. Can we phone? Can I send a comma? To have some two covers of the other brothel house.